I mean, I don't know. Do they get the feeling? Oh, she is like too much. Like she's like oh. Um, might as well be too much than not be there. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Lemon Lessons with Anusha. So I am finally back with another episode with a completely new theme that is graphic design. Yes, we're finally diving into design now. And in this episode, we are in conversation with Shivani. Now she currently works as a designer in Cred. Yeah, man, it's totally crazy. And has also previously interned at Frog Design Studio. In this episode, she talks about her journey, answers stuff related to portfolios, her failed projects, life in college, life after college, and obviously some really cool insights on how to go about things in the field of design. Now I'm really excited for you guys to go through this episode. So you know, just let's dive into it. Shivani, hello how are you? Sha, I'm good. How are you? I am. I'm good. I'm good. So, how has your day been? How day. has things? The day hasn't even begun. To be very honest, <laughs> but it's been good. It's been cold mm-hmm. since morning. Just putting it out there that it's 8 a.m. in the morning <laughs> and we are shooting a podcast. Yeah, Anusha woke me up at 6 a.m. for this <laughs> podcast on a weekend. <laughs> yes. What was the whole process of okay choosing design and going forward with it? Okay, so thankfully, I come from a place of privilege. My father's a designer. Oh wow! Yeah, so he's a product designer. Works in the space of manufacturing, a uh, plastic molded product. Has his own company, manufacturing unit. A bunch of designers. Blah blah blah. So I think I was exposed to design very early. Like mm-hmm. I was since I was a child. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, they like he he was always. Like, like he was always the person who was like, "Let's do something fun. Let's do this. Let's do that." So I think that has had like the biggest influence on my decisions in life in general. So that was something I discovered pretty early. I think by sixth, seventh grade, I was like, "Yeah, मुझे पक्का designing ही करना." But I think for the longest time, I wanted to study fashion design. Oh, wow. to be very honest, like for the longest time, where I was like, "Yeah, I want to like." Um, and I was also into like stitching stuff. I had a sewing machine, and I used to stitch a bunch of. Outfits and like aprons, blah blah blah. All those bachpan ka stuff, to be very honest. But um, yeah, I think I knew that pretty early on. But uh, I think I made like more informed decisions much later on. Okay. I think by eleventh grade ish, I was like, okay, I don't think I want to do fashion design. It just seemed like the hot topic at the moment, sort of a thing. But that's definitely not what what I wanted to study or do further. So um, I think yeah, I think by like first year is when I realized that okay now it's time to make the yeah. decision of what I actually want to do, and I think I was still pretty clueless. So wait, you entered college with the idea that you want to do fashion? No, 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 no. no? Yeah, by eleventh grade I was like I don't want to do fashion. Eleventh grade you? Yeah. Okay. So um, applied to a bunch of schools, and then uh, I think from like I think first year was anyways foundation where like I tried a bunch of things I think throughout I just didn't have clarity I just knew I wanted to build stuff do stuff but mm-hmm. I didn't know what exactly I was like just sab kuch karna I sab think kuch karna. it's I think that's um that's how it started off but uh, yeah like I think by first year when I had to make the decision of what exactly I wanted to do my parents were like okay if not fashion design at least product design because my dad's like dude I have it set up for you but um I don't think I was interested in that. Okay. Um I think I saw him do that enough where I was like okay this this I is don't want to do. Yeah, this is not too. something I would enjoy okay. personally. Okay. Um he's also an engineer and then turned into a designer. Yeah. So has enough understanding of how things work from like a practical point of view mm-hmm. and that's something that I personally didn't enjoy. So I was like I definitely don't want to product design like from a manufacturing standpoint or enter his business yeah so yeah i think first year i came to college and then i was like okay maybe i should consider a graphic design i think i made this decision during covid where we were all like isolated mm-hmm. so spoke to a bunch of people and i was like okay maybe graphic design maybe maybe yeah because i think it's it's an umbrella of multiple things mm-hmm. so i was just like okay maybe i'll do multiple things and i'll figure out what i want i think throughout i was pretty clueless about 
what exactly i wanted to do not like i have enough clarity right now <laughs> but um, i think i like what i do right now yeah. as compared to where i was at that point so yeah i think that's how i entered design i knew like i can't think of anything else that i could do if not no alternate uh, had no plan b no ever. plan b wow yeah. so do you, would you recommend people to have a plan b or just go with it's a, just have one plan a and my plan b was probably to be a tattoo artist wow. if nothing i was That's just like so if crazy. nothing i know mm-hmm. this one tattoo studio near yeah. my house i'm going to go there i've spoken to them so it's like a small training mm-hmm. for like 6 months and then you do your first tattoo on yourself and then you qualify to be a tattoo artist apparently So have you and gotten like a tattoo done by her? No, 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 not there yet. But um, yeah, that I think was my plan B. Oh wow! Which I don't talk about. I but. loved the plan B. You can actually <laughs> just uh, do it if you want. Yeah, to. stick it and poke. It can poke. be a side hustle. Yes, but um, right now, first thing that you said, um, you were pretty confused the mm-hmm. whole way. Now I have noticed, and I've actually faced myself when you're confused about a lot of things that are happening. It takes a lot of energy for you to. do whatever you're doing because you're not completely you know in the idea ki yaar yahi karna hai because you know sometimes it's like agar as if i'm doing something and mm-hmm. it's not working out and i'm not even i'm i'm a little confused also at that point of time i just in my head i just feel like you know let's just just let's just get over with this and try something else but in that let's just what we'll get like let's just get over with it in that whole process i don't give my 100% do that thing do you understand yeah. so if i'm not giving my 100% obviously it won't work out so you would never know that uh, oh is this i mean i understand you'd never you don't have to give your 100% at all times but yeah like i genuinely feel that if you want to be good in something you need to put in some amount of effort and some amount of work and if that work is like and if you're confused it just gives you a little work you know Okay, just giving my five percent, it's not working out. Let's go to something else. Do you feel like that? Have you ever felt like that? And but, I know people feel like that. I felt like that. Mm-hmm. So what would you say about it? Um, I think sometimes it's not just about giving your hundred percent, but it's also giving time. Time. I think that lets you think through. Even if you're not doing it, you can visualize if you really want to do it or not. Yeah. When you just let that thing soak. Yeah. I think that would. Mm-hmm. help someone make the right decisions of whether i want to do this or not want to do this i think throughout i gave everything enough time uh did give my 100% for things that really meant something to me but time time yeah and um right now about i think if you you have time but at the same time you would want certain resources right to understand properly if this like टाइम मतलब ऐसे खाली बैठ के तो टाइम नहीं सो व्हाट काइंड ऑफ रिसोर्सेज डिड यू गो थ्रू बिकॉज आई आई एम श्योर दैट अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल जस्ट एंटरिंग इनटू कॉलेज आर सुपर कंफ्यूज्ड अबाउट व्हाट दे वांट टू डू सो एनी रिसोर्स और एनीथिंग दैट यू व्हिच हेल्प्ड यू और एनी वे ऑफ वर्किंग दैट हेल्प्ड यू आउट इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग व्हिच पीपल टू चूज अम आई थिंक टॉकिंग टू पीपल अम टॉकिंग टू पीपल दैट यू एक्चुअली लुक अप टू taking opinions of people or actually doing the kind of shit you imagine yourself to do probably helps you make that perfect mm-hmm. or maybe not so perfect decision yeah um i think i spoke to a lot of mentors seniors people outside of college people in college people working in the industry just yeah. to have like a fair understanding of what it actually is and not the delusion that i'm living in yeah i think uh, people imagine doing certain things but that's probably not how it works out there mm. so mm. i think that really helped me like because i also it was covid right so i wasn't in college where i could walk up to every professor and be like can you like help me out or talk to everyone in the batch and be like to tum kya kar rahe ho for me i think that decision of picking up graphic design for my undergrad discipline as like my major Uh, a bunch of things i think i took into consideration at that point but uh, yeah definitely talking to people that you look up to interesting yeah i think people nowadays are like once you reach a certain year in your college you understand the importance of networking and you understand the importance of just talking because initially i just did it for like 
because I like doing it. But then ultimately, I just saw the benefits of being able to talk to people and not only not only in terms of friendship but also in terms of how they are in their profession how they manage their time and all that stuff but right now you mentioned that um, you did graphics in your undergrad yeah. and uh, as far as i know you're you're a product designer at cred design right so how did that transition happen and yeah so uh, that transition took a while mm-hmm. uh, but i think it started off with just giving everything a shot like i think i picked graphics because i was like okay you know what it has a bunch of things that i can actually explore and figure out what i actually actually want to do uh i think throughout the throughout second year at least i was at it i was like yahi karna hai graphics se karna yeah and um, so much of my work that i was putting out there or like doing at that point had so much to do with okay you know this is the label like this is what i want to do this is what i'm going to do and like you know things of that sort but i think by the end of second year i think i realized that this is not all i want to do i think it came from a place of okay so i had like a virus attack on my laptop so oh. an entire years worth of work just blew off wow and that's when i was like okay so i was under the label of okay i want to do graphic design but none of my work exists to actually prove that okay this is what i do so like i reached a point where i had to like redefine what i'm doing and had to be very picky about the kind of work i'm doing because i think 6 months from then we all, we all had to like apply for internships your third years summer yeah. internships yeah okay. i think ha huh, yeah 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 summer internships so that's when i was like dude i have to be super picky about what i do and like actually figure out what i'm going to put in and you know things of that sort and i think that's when i actually put in the thought mm-hmm. up until that point i was just doing the work mm-hmm. So once I started thinking about it very actively, I realized I wanted to work on something more holistic. Mm. And visual design is definitely like a weapon, but just that didn't make me happy enough with like my work. Like I wasn't that satisfied. So that's when I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna go around explore other things, and that's when I did try a bunch of different things that weren't just a part of the course curriculum in college. Mm. I think college sometimes happens to put you in a box of okay, you know, this is what you're meant to do, but yeah. only when you break out of it, you actually see that there's just a very thin line between what's taught to you and what you can learn. Mm. And I think, except for rocket science, everything can be learned. Like, so yeah, kind of. That's when I put in the work to actually try a bunch of things, and it somehow worked out, dude. So. Like, Yeah, yeah when you talked about college mm-hmm. and like just going back um you just like mentioned how you know in college you you have to go about and just you know college like it kind of restricts you to this one field because in college obviously you have assignments to do so you know you're so you know just loaded with them that you really need to figure out the time to try out other things i mean so how did that work out for you put in the extra hours probably i think also uh, covid we were at COVID. home yeah oh mm. so we had all the time in the world and yeah. i think that's one good part about it was that we weren't restricted to just college because you're just seeing everyone on the internet yeah that was the only bubble we were living in like not college like college i think is a smaller bubble but internet is a slightly larger bubble yeah. so having exposure and access to everything really opened and changed the way we looked at things yeah so yeah covid batch for the win <laughs> <laughs> but like okay so the college bubble now what was the difference now um, obviously we'll go ahead and talk about the the different things that you explored and actually what was the difference in experience in graphics and product design which is okay Can you explain our listeners what's the difference between product design, industrial design, UX, product? Like, how does that work? Okay. I'll be very honest. I don't label things in this format. Like, that's okay. what I meant by uh, just because I studied graphic design does not mean I have to be just a graphic designer. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't see value in the labels. I think I see more value in what you learn in that space. Yeah. And I think design as a space is more fluid. Things overlap, and I think. in between those overlaps is where interesting beautiful things are built mm um uh, so yeah something that's more interdisciplinary mm something that's more 
more like a mix of multiple things is something that I always was going for. Yeah. So that's about it. Like even under probably product design, I don't look at it as just UX. Okay. Like I think cred that's how I ended up being the perfect place for me, where it's it's not an org that just believes in like compartmentalizes UX and UI and visual design and all of that. it's an amalgamation of things that make it a beautiful product so yeah lovely and uh, right now when you mentioned that you know college bubble and industry out there so what was um, like what difference did you feel once you like once you started entering the industry once you like i, I think you mentioned in third year onwards you started being picky about your project you started being like okay like in 6 months you have your internship so i think a lot of people like your friends and people around you they were also in the same way so was there some sort of rat race happening and like competition wise like what was the difference in terms of college and industry yeah um, the transition transition i think it's been like 10 11 months since i I'm, i haven't like been in college mm-hmm. as such uh i think the difference is that everyone around you is doing the same thing in college yeah whereas out here everyone isn't doing the same thing everyone's doing quite different things and you get to learn a lot out of it like you get to zoom out of what you're doing i think college i didn't zoom out enough hmm. to see what's going on i did zoom out to some extent hmm. but i think now i actually i'm able to see a bunch of things actually experience talk to people about what they do why they do what they do people also come from different walks of life college is a total place of privilege where everyone knew what they wanted to do and they're all here to do that yeah. um right now the people that you meet everyone's like everyone has a very different life story and their reason for showing up for design was so different from yours yeah unlike college where mm. everyone was like oh i wanted to do it so i thought i should you know come here yeah So yeah. I think that really opens up your perspective. Mm. And abhi when you mention that you know everyone comes from a different you know this place all together how did that um maybe inspired your design in some or the other ways because when you talk to a lot of people when you meet so many people you understand the different perspectives that they have mm-hmm. and you know slowly and gradually when you move forward those perspectives start influencing your design not in a negative way but you try to incorporate that's like around everywhere so like you when you said you heard stories from so many people who like are coming from so many different walks of lives how was that experience and would you like to share like any few experiences that you had a few stories that someone else told you about their design which was like you know inspired you a lot so i don't think it just changes design or like the way you design mm. i think it changes the way you look at problems around you okay majorly that mm. uh the kind of things people have worked on i think that also has a huge impact like a very recent project that i think has inspired me the most was of a of someone that i previously worked with not here at cred but like at, i was working at frog for the last 6 months out that's mm. where i did my grad project mm. people had the most interesting projects it was a self initiated project that we had to work on for 6 months where we had mentors and kick ass like <laughs> everyone worked on their passion project and what means like a lot to someone is so different from what means a lot to you right so i think those 6 months were unmatched too good and too good to be true in that sense because i got to witness people's journeys around me mm So I think that really inspired me. Yeah, I I can't even explain how amazing <laughs> that was. <laughs> well, lovely. So I think uh, when you were entering Frog, that's when you were the graphic uh, person, like um a little earlier. So um, okay. I did my summer internship, the third year one at Leaf, where mm-hmm. I was a visual designer, but I was working on their product design case studies. Okay. And that's when I had this moment of. yeah this is what i want to do like it's an amalgamation of so many things and it's actually crafting experiences but since i come from a visual design background i think my goal with that is to make sure that those experiences are maybe more memorable like you remember how it makes you feel so it's like a combination of 
how visual design can be used while crafting experiences and that's when i was like dude this is what i want to do so that's when i started like applying to places for an experience design role and at frog that's what i worked as but it was a self initiated project so we had the freedom to like start off with research and a bunch of very different things there so yeah and what would you say is like if you can pinpoint three differences that you felt when you were transitioning from graphics to product three yeah differences okay so uh i think i don't know how to explain this wow <laughs> i won't call them differences yeah. i will call them uh maybe challenges mm. i don't think i can pinpoint differences in that sense but i think a major challenge was to be able to believe in the fact that you can also do this and pick this like yeah that i think took the longest time because everyone so thankfully i was surrounded by a bunch of ux students like in my block or like my roommate and like a bunch of people so i actually saw them do this and i was like it's not it's not something that can't be learned right like you put in the work like they're also learning this for the last let's say 3 years longer time for sure but i can actually spend time and learn when i'm interested in doing something like this it just takes like a lot of practical thinking so um i think that was one major challenge where i was just like but i come from a graphic design background but breaking out of that and being like so what like you know let's let's like get to understanding how things are done mm-hmm. so that was one of the biggest road blocks to begin with uh later on i think when i was applying to places facing rejection because you realize that a bunch a bunch of places have like requirements right like saying ki okay your undergrad needs to be in ux or blah 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 oh, so is so, that so like because a something lot that i feel is people nowadays are coming and telling me that you know let's just take graphic design and keep ux as the minor because ultimately you can just go ahead and do it because um, you know 6 mahine ka lo course karke they do you which is true so which is very true why should i put like 3 4 years into like a discipline like this but yeah what well, what what is your say on that as well so boot camps are just the beginning of understanding the fundamentals of ux mm-hmm. but uh, that alone won't help you really thrive it takes a lot of work to actually build something substantial and understand things mm-hmm. uh, that's the same like i think visual design is a craft that you work on and you build and develop i think when i started off in second year if like i've lost my work thankfully <laughs> it was trash like it was absolute trash when i look back right but um it it just takes time to actually practice what you're doing to get good at it so short sure, boot camps help but boot camps are just the kick start uh yeah. that alone wouldn't help you develop the ability to think it will just teach you probably how to think yeah right yeah so 4 so, years or 3 years if you say giving 3 years to a discipline like this in college is it worth it according to you 10 on 10 worth it 10 on 10 worth it even if i go back like now i know i work as a product designer at cred uh, even if i go back in time i would still study graphic design in college yeah i think it it really opened up so many things for me like mm-hmm. i've worked on print media i've worked on digital stuff i've worked on like motion design i've worked on a bunch of 3d stuff worked with ar i've worked with vr simulations it's a variety of things and i think this variety is what brings in a different way of thinking but a lot of people in graphics these days are like till second or maybe beginning of the third year or maybe and like mid third year tak they start getting stuff jo apne portfolio mein dal sakte hain usse pehle like they don't have anything apparently to put in their portfolio because tab tak they are just like i think right now my friends in graphics have started doing publication there's this one course it's the best course <laughs> yeah and i think uh, that was one thing that they're like and movie i think a film and video course also they had and these are the things they're like now we have something some content to put in our portfolio before that they had nothing and uh, like in comparison to ux if i if i see from the very beginning i think so from the second year only maybe the quality of work is not that good but the projects are so structured and well crafted like the end mm-hmm. result that i can put it in my portfolio i think my second year 
one of my second year works only are there in my portfolio and it's like people like it so what do you think about that i think what goes into your portfolio is a very personal choice hmm. uh it about it i think highly depends on what you want to do how you want to be perceived hmm. and what kind of work have you set as a benchmark hmm. uh i think one of the greatest piece of advice is that i got when i was working on mine was to hit publish okay. because making your portfolio or your website is just an endless like process right so um uh, uh, at no point will you feel like your portfolio is ready and when you talk about courses uh entire of second year has a lot of skill based courses because we're learning multiple skills in graphic design mm-hmm. and that's that's how you end up not having a project that is a culmination of a lot of skills mm-hmm. only by third year is when you get to work on projects where there's some amount of branding some amount of motion or video editing and like collaterals that are digital and print media so a culmination of these only come when you're actually good at all of these different skill sets right so which is why i think people say that yeah but yeah. i think it's a very personal choice a bunch of people from my batch had a lot of second year stuff that made it to their portfolio yeah okay i had i lost it <laughs> yeah, I lost yeah just it. just take a backup guys <laughs> keep something in your hard disk everything in your hard disk everything in your hard disk but okay coming back to the three things that you were telling the second was the rejection that you know, yeah i don't i don't think initially i took rejection well because i was like sh- like I, ob- very obvious right i did have thoughts of should i like just continue graphic design like places that i applied to you qualify for the task like you they give you like a design task i'm so sorry it's, they give you like a design task and you qualify for it blah and then um uh, after that they walk up to you and be like okay so you have qualified you have done the product design task but we would love to offer you a like you know visual design role to begin with and then i'm like am i supposed to continue visual design like is that why this has been happening on multiple occasions mm, but why do you think that was happening was it because of the degree that you were getting maybe i'm, I'm not very sure i'm okay. not very sure about okay. it okay. but um, everything that happened i think boiled down to me questioning myself yeah mm-hmm. and it kind of sometimes can happen to break the belief that you have in yourself yeah so i think that was one thing that i was still mm-hmm. having a hard time with mm-hmm. but eventually i think i broke I out of it out. yeah mm-hmm. yeah and i think the third thing that i personally have learned out of this journey of like transitioning from visual to ux is that i don't draw those titles of okay this is visual design this is ux design like it's more fluid mm-hmm. like your your experiences can be more visually driven or your visuals can be more from an experience standpoint and okay. it's mm-hmm. i think it's an interesting mix of things i think so, product like ux can be just the way you just told about visuals i think it can work well with actual tangible products also exactly i think every discipline i think at some point i also look at isf like interior space and i feel ux can be you know we can dive in that factor as well and these days i don't think so people do much inter disciplinary things uh, yeah. work but i think collaborating with other disciplines really helps you in understanding how design is um, you know uh, going on in different different fields like yeah definitely like i think it also helps you approach things in a more holistic sense mm-hmm. than viewing it as bits and pieces of a discipline yeah so that's something that i've realized that i think college titles things under disciplines because they're obviously teaching you courses yeah. specific to that field but it's i think it's a choice to break out of it and choose to learn multiple things i think i personally would <laughs> suggest people to do that to like do that. it would help you yeah people who are starting with their graduation project right now now as you mentioned in frog the f- like you had a self initiated project now mostly whenever you are doing like a graduation project if you get something samne se it's easy like you don't have to put in so much brain because whenever you end up choosing ki ye chahiye ye chahiye ye chahiye time lag jata hai so once you said you had to come up with a self initiated project you had to come up with your own idea how how much time did it take to like you know just be like okay this is what i want to do because there's so many things that i want to do but i can't just be like okay i'm putting my completely valid i think it's a process of introspection that it started off with like understanding what really means something to you 
uh, wherein my mentor and I sat and we used to have long conversations about the most random things where he used to be like, oh, so what do your parents do? Or like, what's your favorite hobby? And like, just understanding me as a person at the core to help me pick what's the right thing for me. So we did shortlist a bunch of different things that I wanted to work on. We looked at like an overlap of, okay, you know what? This domain is where I see a lot of your topics. This domain is where I see very few topics. And like what really is interesting, what has enough scope, considering also the timeline, available resources. So we boiled like a, like we boiled, it just boiled down to like a specific set of topics. But I think crafting a brief still took much longer. Like it was just secondary research to understand a space and then being like, okay, in this space, this is the niche. And in this niche, this is the problem area. And in this problem area, this is the specific thing that I want to design for. Okay. So it was a process. I won't say I woke up one day and I was like, yeah. karna hai. That, that didn't happen. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah, but like when someone puts a project out, you think, bro, wow, they just knew what they wanted to do. I'm sure it's not that way. Like it's, exactly. it's a whole process yeah. and a journey that um, we don't get to see all the time. Mm. So um, it was that process for me that really helped me understand that I enjoy working with children. I think they're the most creative, the most unfiltered, unhinged people to work with. Yeah. Um, and it's also a very complicated space, like children aren't easy. So I was just like, it's challenging enough, but also something that I would enjoy. Yeah. So yeah, I think EdTech was a space that I wanted to explore with children. But then, yeah, it was a lot of back and forth thinking through things and yeah, that's how. So in this whole process, like from college, now we had, uh, we we heard the story of the Shivani who was in 11th, maybe <laughs> 8, 9, 7 grade. Now she went to college, then she went to uh, LEAF, did her third year internship, and then as a visual designer, and then she went to Frog. Now, this whole process, if you have to jot down, at least like, if you have to jot down three mistakes that you did, three errors that you made which weren't like in a negative way but something that you know made you realize okay you know this is how I should do things now like personal it's it's not it's not generally but yeah, yeah, personal yeah. also uh, mistakes though bro like a <laughs> bunch of them but I think it's cool like I look back at them and I'm like okay that's what helped me get here mm. so it's pretty chill that way but I think some of my major mistakes would be being terrified of ideas that I had in my head like not giving it a shot Hmm. yeah and everything would probably lies on the other side of fear but being so terrified of I really want to do this but not having enough faith of you know whether I will make it I think I was really scared of failure for the longest time but I was like I won't apply till I finish putting in my best projects of my portfolio because what if mm-hmm. the person I'm applying to won't like me, which is valid. But I think for the longest time, I missed out on a few opportunities doing that. Um, I think that was this time when I think it was in my second year during COVID itself, where um, there was a portfolio review happening and I had applied to like sit for that review and it was with like a really cool panel. But then last minute, there was some issue and I couldn't publish it. And then I was like, I don't think I should show them something incomplete. So I don't think I'm going to sit for this. And I started spiraling and I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to sit for this. And then later on, a friend of mine who was also sitting for this, she was like, bro, just show up. It's fine. Not a big deal. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's give this a shot. And someone from that panel liked my work. And they're like, hey, man, do you want to work with me for like a month or two? And I actually worked with her. And I think so. there there was a really small startup back then. And um, when I worked there, I think that's when I realized that, bro, this is the kind of work I want to do. Like, it's really cool. So I think everything happened to be panning out perfectly when you look at it from like a third person's point of view. But there was a lot of chaos while doing things. So I think give it a shot is one thing that I wish someone told me enough Mm. back then. Like, just just go for it. (laughs) Just go for it. So I think that is one thing that I personally think about even now. Um, Secondly, wow, bro, I can't think of three major blunders in life. (laughs) (laughs) 
okay we can keep this for the end like once we are done yeah yeah, yeah. then i think we can compile everything and just keep three blunders but <laughs> no but this one was lovely honestly i think i see a lot of people like i'm no one to say why oh, i see potential in you because i'm just like 21 i'm just a kid right exactly. now exactly but uh, like there are people in my batch only i see so much potential in them but it's just that you know i don't know you just the thoughts are in your head they just keep smi- spiraling exactly. and then it's like should i should not this that and i was like when i just realized ek point as aage and i was like you know nobody cares about my success nobody cares about my failure as much as i do when that thing enters your head no it's just like go for it yeah because if you do well you're the only one who'll get the credit for it and if you do bad you're the only one who'll be you know be like yeah i think you just stop taking yourself too seriously no one's it's taking you that seriously exactly. like it's it's more of that exactly just stop taking it so seriously but um, exactly true but yeah now frog is done um, had a great time in bangalore i guess how was bangalore as a city great you bro f- i think bangalore as a city was apart from traffic that's also because i lived in like near orrar mm. but um, i think it's a great city like i'm having a good time it's so i'm from bombay but my roots are from hyderabad okay. so bangalore is like the perfect mix of slightly as i won't say as fast as bombay definitely not but it's it's like the perfect mix of what bombay and hyderabad would be like it's south indian but it's also like bombay mm-hmm. so like i like the food <laughs> um yeah i think i think food I'm not saying it has great food it doesn't yeah, but yeah. um I can just walk up to some odipi bro yeah that that means so much to <laughs> me you you have no idea how much I miss that in pune like in college like someone take me to eat dosa oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Rameshwar, I'm for the win. Like for me, like since I just came here, I mean, I think the first day when I landed, I I just went to Rameshwar with my friend, and I don't know. I was like the first guy just felt <laughs> like, oh, what am I eating? It's so South Indian food. But yeah, I think because of this whole thing, I'm just like an Idli fan now. But yeah, okay, lovely. Anyway, <laughs> but now let's move forward from Italy and dosas to cred. Mm-hmm. I think that is like I don't want to put like that's that's like cred as Shivani because I know you're so much more than cred itself. But I think the listeners out there would love to know how the whole process was of getting into cred, meeting people, how it's like. how is it working there do you meet these fancy people that we all think you might meet i don't know <laughs> like when someone said she's like working in cred i was like oh is she having dinner with tanya but i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah how is the process so um process when it comes to application kind of stuff so i actually wanted to intern at cred oh. and i had applied to them i had like written to every human i know there Through and emails and stuff. Email, LinkedIn, everywhere that I could reach out to. Okay. And um, again, I applied during full time because just someone told me that you know there is an opening, and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna shoot my shot. And um, I wrote to them, and somehow, yeah, I got shortlisted, and I got a call from them. And I got a call from them like I didn't expect that at that moment. but um i spoke to them and they're like okay cool we're going to schedule an interview and i was like okay sounds okay. good i don't want to stop you but i want to know what exactly were you doing when you got that call <laughs> because that is like the key moment you know <laughs> bro it was so i had actually gone to chikmangalore with my cousins mm-hmm. and i was playing with so they had two dogs so mm-hmm. i'm chilling with the two dogs and um, we're like running around the whole bungalow ye wo and then suddenly i get a call and then i pick up and um, Nandini was like, "Hey, Shivani, uh, I'm calling from Claire." And I was like, <gasps> "And I have, sh- I'm like, I'm asking the dogs to leave the room. I'm like, I need to shut the door, just leave because I don't want them to bark in the middle of this call." And um, I'm asking them to leave, and I'm like, "Okay, out, out." I'm like, "One second," and I've, I've pushed them out. I've shut the door, and I'm like, "Hello, hi." And uh, yeah, I was like, I didn't expect that. I'm on a chill holiday, vibing with dogs, and it's raining in Bangalore, but. Um, Yeah, it was it was great talking to her, like mm. you know, and it was a long call. It was like a forty-five minutes call where oh, we were wow. just chit-chatting this that, 
and then I thought okay this is it like it was it went for 45 minutes so I think this is it and then she was like okay so I'll schedule an interview and I was like okay I thought I I, I don't know I just thought this is it and then like later on she told me that you know that was a vibe check call oh wow and I was like damn vibe check I really like it check. and I was like wow that that feels good but um it's like cool then we'll like HR will reach out blah blah and I was like yeah sounds good and I'll be very honest I've given multiple interviews like throughout the whole placement period in college while, while applying to places i've given multiple interviews a rough number <laughs> <laughs> i'm just number dropping here but like i have to think about it bro easily more than like 10 to 15 okay 10 to 15 se to kafi zyada hmm. but uh, i haven't felt like no interview felt this way like the interviews i gave at cred um uh, i think my first interview was with atul Mm-hmm. and uh, it felt like he walked in more prepared than i was wow. for the interview mm-hmm. and i was like shit bro that leaves me thinking that i don't even know if this went well or it didn't right okay correct but it was the most wholesome beautiful conversation it didn't feel like i'm being questioned it was a conversation trying to understand my perspectives my core beliefs about design understanding what i really want to do at the like understanding me as a person and why i did the things i did right it was a conversation that was more introspective i don't even think i thought about these things and only after those conversations like while having my conversation in the middle of the interview i'm actually thinking about okay so why did i do this <laughs> and it was the most honest conversation and i loved it i was just like bro this is a vibe like yeah. it, it felt great and i was like okay i don't know how it went because he walked in more prepared than i was is what i was left with hmm. but it felt so good and i was like okay this this is what i want to consider and um, all my rounds like they had like three rounds or whatever and then yeah i got shortlisted and i was <laughs> like okay this is happening like because i really wanted to work there yeah. for the longest time yeah um i think one of the main reasons why i wanted to work there is because cred is the perfect example of what visual design and product design put together not under specific like not under different labels but as a mix of what they can be for each other mm-hmm. looks like and yeah. i was like this is exactly what i want to do like i want to work on visually driven products and understand how do you craft experiences yeah so everything was just happening and i was like sure this is <laughs> happening and yeah it was great it is unmatched unmatched <laughs> but um okay so once you just said that you cold like you mailed a lot of people you texted a lot of people you know just went out like shani 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 yeah, people are like getting probably everyone's <laughs> having lunch and everyone's phones are pinging <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so mostly i understand when you say this but i think when people out there are applying just applying they don't know how to do that they don't know how to just you know like, <laughs> yo bro like what should be the conversation starter hi bro what's up or like like just yeah. like did you like me like did you just draft a long message with your portfolio link and all that stuff or did you just start with a conversation on linkedin like what what was that i know so, it's very nitty gritty kind of a thing but yeah. this is something i feel so i personally with. think i wrote to a lot of people uh, mm-hmm. majorly on linkedin where i write to them saying hey i really want to work here here's my portfolio let me know if we can talk um heard back from a few where they were like hey man we're not hiring oh no and everyone like, said the same thing yeah a bunch of them did and then uh, hunted his personal email id because he wasn't applying on <laughs> um uh, linkedin and i was like but i've written to him saying bro please <laughs> but does it come as like you know um, just like awkward or anything for the other person because I mean I don't know do they get the feeling oh she is like too much like she's like oh it might as well be too much than not be there <laughs> like yeah Loved like in it. the sense of take your shot dude like either you make it or you won't be there like but the only way you're going to have a seat at the table is by walking up to the table right like so correct correct give it a shot like that's mm. something I personally think I don't know if it's the right thing mm. but you have nothing to lose. Yeah. At this you age absolutely have nothing to lose like what you're missing out on is probably that opportunity because you're too scared to text someone. <laughs> She so, said what if I come off as desperate? <laughs> might as well be. Yeah. Because I don't know like that's what I felt yeah. and it somehow worked out. 
I think one of the opportunities I got was be like after being super desperate about it after just yeah. constantly being like, like dude I really want to work here please hire me <laughs> it's not that bad I guess yeah correct so correct now yeah so the hiring you said three rounds happened mm-hmm. no? how like what was three rounds like sab mein interview ho raha tha ya fir so um they have like different um parameters for judgment for each round um mm-hmm. uh, so one would be about your understand like your portfolio and like your understanding of product design your understanding of like your design thinking skills and like your visual design and like they have like a bunch of parameters so the hr told me that you know you'll be judged on xyz round 2 was more of like how do you work in groups how do you work in collaboration how do you uh, and i think they asked some really interesting questions so yeah it's it's more of that so like round 2 even round 3 like it's it's more of just, just the, understanding the way you think mm-hmm. and the way you approach things your um your core beliefs what design means to you how you perceive problems how you work around it mm-hmm. more of that so it was just one on one conversation or did you have to do like so i mean i know at this point of time that doesn't really matter because the brief is just only but mostly mm-hmm. i think when we are like thinking of interviews and stuff you always think oh is this a one on one conversation do i need a paper and pen do i need some software downloaded like mm-hmm. the, the 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 small small things so mm-hmm. was it just a one on one conversation it was a one on one so i i wish i was in bangalore and all of this happened i flew oh, all home. this happened online this happened online oh, wow but okay. um so they didn't give me a design task or anything mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. like um, that's something even they said that they were like um we don't believe in giving you a task i think you've made your portfolio i'm sure it's yours so like we'd love to know you as a person okay. so um it's it's more of that like it's it's really not i don't know how to explain it man like but they're definitely doing a vibe check yeah they're definitely <laughs> doing a vibe check guys but okay now this happened now how was your first day in cred <laughs> <laughs> it was really cute man like I'll be very honest. First day was the most overwhelming day I've had there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went to the design bay and I meet like I meet the whole team and I was like, wow, everyone's so cool, everyone's so smart, everyone's so good at what they do. <laughs> and I was just crippling on the inside because I was like, bro, it's it's crazy. Like ev- like the team is just so full of talent, and I was just like blown away. And um, yeah, it was very overwhelming to be really honest. Mm-hmm. Like I think. I wasn't ready for it. Like I was not ready to meet such crazy people if that's how I want to put it. Mm-hmm. But um yeah, I walked out of office. It's like right next to Magnolia. I got a huge piece of cake and I just sat there eating the cake <laughs> because I was so overwhelmed. I was like, "Bro, this is crazy." But um yeah, first day was just chill, bro. Like I walked in, picked up my laptop and this worked. And how would you just define like a day in office? like how does it start okay. how uh, does it start how does it end like everything just be as casual as you want okay to be. so uh, f- i think personally my day depends on the amount of work i'm pla- aiming to finish so i usually prefer waking up early or finishing my work than attending meetings going to office so i go to office post like some after i finish like substantial work sitting home and then um, work throughout the day i think evening like step out for snacks sometimes everything's on 100 feet road mm. so i think yeah. it's a great location yeah that way does uh, it distract you uh not really bro mm. you'll know when to take the right breaks i think that's one thing mm. so yeah and like work throughout the day and then evenings can end in any way bro if it's a friday we might all end up being in daddies mm-hmm. or if it's probably some week day we might be playing mono deal in the evening post work <laughs> it's it's damn chill like yeah. there are uh, yeah work work days are pretty simple like i don't know how to explain simple, it specifically like, it's just, just simple you're just working you're chilling you're with people yeah. chit chatting work yeah it's amazing and uh, right now when you were talking about your interviews you talked you said they asked about one of your failed projects right <laughs> yeah would you want to talk about like or um, maybe not talk about it just tell me what all you learned from that project <laughs> so a failed project would essentially i think for me a failed project was personally something that i have put in my portfolio but it was a it was a design task that i had done for some other 
uh, interview and uh, it's something i pulled off in like 3 days it was more like a sprint so projects like that have a lot of loopholes because in 3 days you can't think through all possibilities of how things need to be solved mm-hmm. so i think i count that as a failed project which isn't thought through uh good things i think should be thought through in all possible ways and that's what makes it more mm-hmm. holistic mm-hmm. so i think that's a failed project for me now when i look back i'm just embarrassed but i'm like theek hai it is it is what it is <laughs> yeah something that i could do in a short period of time like it really helps you analyze how rapidly i can think and like actually like you know yeah. shell out a bunch of things so mm-hmm. yeah yeah so okay now coming back to the question about three errors blunders <laughs> right we had two in our pocket let's just talk about the last one last one would be things work out i think that's something i didn't believe in mm. i really wanted to turn out great and it didn't work out and i was like bro this is the end and like i had like a whole separate folder where i had put in like everything that i've written to them this that and i have shut the folder and i've put that file in like aside and i was like it's over i'm not <laughs> applying now this is it but yeah somehow i happen to work here now and yeah. things do work out yeah like probably not in the ways you plan them to but life definitely has a plan yeah and if something's not working out for you there's 100% something better waiting for you this is something that your parents will tell you and hmm. you will not believe it yeah <laughs> this is something Jho everyone will tell you hai, and you will achhe ke liye hota, hota hai is something i didn't believe in because i was like mama please <laughs> that's not how it is yeah but um, these are things you can only experience first hand and actually believe in correct so yeah dude like have faith in the process the process of even failing something that i was terrified of and i think that's something that i've seen myself like more than a transition from graphics to ux i think a transition that i see in the last 4 years is mm-hmm. from being someone who's so terrified of things to actually being someone who's yeah ready to go for it interesting lovely and uh, now since we are approaching the end of the podcast um the question of the season is <laughs> what do you think is the yellow in you what do you think is something that makes you different or just makes you stand out You can take your time. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think the yellow in me is the fact that I do end up sometimes being sad about things that didn't happen my way, but I'm someone who adapts to things. Things change, and it just takes some time, and I will choose to adapt. I'm not very um, dramatic about it. Maybe. Yeah. I think that has helped me in so many ways. Be it, I think. there hasn't been a very specific constant in my life like i moved cities i moved places or like um you know friend circles kept changing work kept changing places i worked at kept changing area like even in bangalore things kept changing but the only thing that was constant is like choosing to adapt to what has changed and i think that's the yellow like yeah. to be able to embrace the beauty and change yeah I think that's that's really cool. That's really really cool because um, I don't think so. Every I don't think so. Any day is the same as it was before. Yeah. Even if it as monotonous as you would say it is, there are tidbits that are gonna be different. And if you're just ready to just yeah, like take the shape of whatever is coming your way, maybe it'll work out. Exactly. Like I think. believing in the fact that this will be so much better like as time passes yeah is something that i've actually learned like learned it the hard way but i think it's the best thing oh my god i've actually picked up on so yeah that's it shivani you i'm so happy that you accepted our offer and you came here and uh, woke up at um, i don't know <laughs> six to just do this with me so like really really thank you so much i think our listeners would love to just sit down and listen to your whole journey it's it's pretty inspiring it's pretty cool actually you should just put yourself in a place where you should be like you know what i can give you that that you have done a lot of things in life at the marriage of 21 22 to make me feel old i'm 20 <laughs> thank you so much for going through the whole podcast and sitting here till the end of it please subscribe to my channel and you know just go through the above drill like share comment subscribe and all that 
does i mean yeah you know you know it and um, thank you thank you so much next episode will be launching soon and yeah that's it bye